everyone. Today, I want to continue the discussion about backyard raising of hens or bees. And people often mistaken. Now, this is going to be from a health perspective, environmental and ethical perspective as well. So I'm going to give you all the information. The last two videos that I, or not last two videos, but the previous videos I did on this subject was basically on the ethical concerns of animal farming. So let's talk about the health. So all that you need to ask yourself is, does eggs, dairy, and honey ever, 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 ever cured anybody's heart disease, anybody's cancer? Did eggs, dairy, and honey, I'm not talking about specific type of egg or specific type of dairy, and dairy, I mean cheese, milk, butter, yogurt, you know, all those things. Honey, did those substances that come from animals, out of animals, do those substances cure, cure heart disease and cancer? Do they cure heart disease and cancer? And the answer is no. So why do we put these things in our bodies? Why do we put other beings' secretions into our bodies? Why do we do this? This doesn't make sense. From a health perspective, there's huge amounts of cholesterol, cholesterol, especially in eggs, huge amounts of saturated fat. Honey is empty calories. Empty calories means that there's no nutritional value in the honey itself. There's no nutritional value at all. Don't take in the lies from people because health-wise, these are the worst foods that you could possibly eat. The worst foods. Howard Lyman, fourth generation cattle rancher, former cattle, cattle rancher, he said dairy is probably the worst thing that we can put in our bodies. Of course, dairy, eggs, and honey are. And there's really no ethical way to steal from an animal. When you have hens, okay, you might have a few hens that lay eggs, but they lay very, very few eggs per year. If we want to continuously eat eggs every day or even every week, we're not going to be able to do it with just a few hens. We might need a few hundred in order to produce the amount of eggs that we need to consume. And we, again, take the eggs, which, are, which is not ours, we take the eggs, which, which is absolutely not ours to, to use, and we take those eggs, we steal the eggs that belong to the hens, we steal the eggs, and we consume what comes out of the hens, literally from the hens' ass. It's literally a vagina, it's an ass, it's the anal opening, it's, or the anus opening, uh, it's, It's absolutely disgusting to be eating what comes out of a hen, hen's butt, okay? Absolutely disgusting. Then we eat the egg and we praise ourselves for not being picky and choosy, <laughs> which has the highest cholesterol out of virtually any food out there. The highest cholesterol has tons of saturated fat. It's made from blood and there's uh, all kinds of who knows what's in there. It's just gross. And we again steal from the animals. 
Now there's a lot of other ethical considerations when we when we talk about eggs, but this is specifically on eggs and honey from backyard productions. And there's always going to be some ethical concerns. For example, when we first purchase the hens, we have to purchase them from somewhere. And they usually come from hatcheries. So what happens in hatcheries is that the baby chicks are sexed. Okay, they're, uh, they're sorted and they're sexed, meaning that females go in one area and the males go in the other area. The males, almost always on the first day, the males are grinded alive. Grinded alive. They're no use to the, to the industry, so they're grinded alive. Majority of them are grinded alive. Rest of them, of course, uh, go on to become, you know, chicken production. So if you are a vegetarian or pescatarian and you're still consuming eggs, you're consuming dead, you're consuming the egg, but you're consuming, you're, 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 you're supporting the killing, the maceration of male chicks, usually on the first day of birth, sometimes even fully in the egg, sometimes fully in the egg. Or uh, I've seen videos where, where the, the bird is trying to, trying to, the chick is trying to get out of, of, so they're kind of like half in and half out of the egg. The egg is kind of broken. And they just throw all those baby male chicks into the grinder either into the grinder or into garbage bins or plastic bags to suffocate them. So when we eat eggs, when we say, oh, but these eggs, these hens are beneficial. <laughs> we are causing harm. Not only our health is deteriorating because of the saturated fat and cholesterol and whole loads of other, you know, uh, acidifying animal protein and so forth that our bodies can't digest can't we understand that and we again steal from these animals their products which are theirs their secretions are theirs not ours and anyways going back to the hatchery when the animals are shipped that they have to be shipped to wherever they're going to and they're shipped a lot of times in packages with uh, other uh, other animals, with other you know male chicks. They're shipped, and the male chicks are basically the um, foam, the padding. And so they're shipped in boxes. Can you imagine? They're shipped in boxes. These animals. They're shipped in boxes or they're shipped in crates that are so small and who knows how many are on a truck, but they're, I've seen slaughter trucks go by and that's not a pleasant thing. But those ones, of course, are going to slaughterhouses. The, I'm not sure where the, or how the um, female hens are transported, but I've read that they are shipped in boxes and male chicks are there for, for padding. So you'll get male chicks in, in, the, in the order too, if you order them through wherever. Um, yeah, and a lot of times people are not aware of how much, how much work taking care of these animals are. And a lot of times they abandon them. Uh, either they abandon them or they just keep the area very dirty and uh, they get all kinds of, you know, infections and diseases and so forth. We don't know what we're getting ourselves into. We think, oh, you know, they're so beneficial. They're taking away the insects. They're, you know, they're giving us the manure and all this stuff. And by far the manure is the worst thing. I've smelt it. I've lived close to, or actually uh, across and very close to uh, animal farms. And the worst smell is the manure. The worst smell is the manure. Imagine 
actually being on the land and ex being exposed to all this manure and the and manure in the manure there is ammonia. Imagine ammonia is not good for our lungs. It's not good for our lungs. Ammonia is what is inside is what's inside the the excrement, the manure from the animals. Now going on to Oh, before we go on to honey, actually, when the female hens, when the hens are then, you know, when you bring them to your to your farm or to your backyard, you will notice that a lot of them are sickly. Surprising because they are sick because they've been transported. Who knows how, how far and how long. And they've been in those boxes without any food and water. And they've been bouncing around. Who knows, you know, how much, uh, you know, hitting they're getting and how much bouncing around they're getting. So they're sick. They're tired. And a lot of them will die on the on the in, on the on the way to wherever these chicks are going to. I've seen chicks in stores i've seen these chicks uh in farmers markets and in um what are they called um like flea flea markets and stuff like that so don't think that you know just buying the chick and that's it you know no there's so much more behind the whole story Male chicks are killed. Uh, the hens, you know, they had a brutal, you know, shipping time, and uh, it's 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 not just like imagine if you have ten people and they're shipped in a in a container or shipped in a in a cage or something. You know, it's not a fun way to 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 go. So let's talk about honey because this is very 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 important that I need to talk about. People lie when they say that you can, you can, and I've heard even vegans say this, that they have bees, uh, you know, they raise bees and they collect the honey and it's just like a couple taps and the honey comes out. The mass production, the commercial production of, of honey is awful go and research it yourself the mass commercial production but this is about backyard beekeeping for majority of people they're going to need the whole beekeeper outfit so they don't get stung and the reason is because the bees are trying to defend their home Wherever, however you're keeping the bees, usually they're in trays, but however you're keeping the bees, they want to protect their home. Plain and simple, they want to protect their home. And a lot of times, let's just say you just collect the honey. Okay, now people say, and this is really misinformation, people say bees give out more honey than they need, more honey than they need. So for one pound, one pound of honey, they have to go to like hundreds or even thousands of flowers just to get enough, just to make enough honey. So they bring it back, and of course, eventually bring it back. And to make one pound of honey takes so many, many flowers and plants and long, long flying distances for these poor bees and their honeybees okay because uh, they are the ones that produce the uh, most honey the honey is regurgitated it's in their stomachs the honey is in their stomachs and they they do some kind of process where the honey keeps you know it's like keeps going back and forth like keeps going into their mouths and back and forth and until until this honey is created so it's regurgitated food 
regurgitated food literally is vomit. So bees produce the, the honey that we know is literally bee vomit because it's regurgitated food. Regurgitated food means it, the food is in the stomach, but it comes out from the mouth. That's what regurgitated food is or regurgitation. And we're literally eating bee vomit, which is has absolutely no nutritional value. No nutritional value. Now it may taste good, but there's so many other sweeteners out there that there's no excuse to be eating something that comes from an animal. And yes, bees are animals. Insects are animals. Yes, there are occasions when vegans might swap a fly or mosquito, but that is out of instinct, just or just to protect ourselves. There is a video that I that I um, responded to. It's by John Kohler from OK Raw, and he is sitting with friend backyard beekeeper and even this lady which i can't recall her name but even this lady mentions that in the process of collecting the honey because she she does it supposedly the most minimal harm so she does it and she says herself directly that she kills some bees in the process of collecting the honey now she says that majority of the honey goes to the bees but some of them some of the honey she collects for herself so she doesn't take everything which of course is definitely better than taking everything and giving them cheap uh substitute sugar water and stuff like that but definitely that is still stealing number one number two um she says and I'm going to reiterate this. She says that she kills some bees in the process. Okay? So, eggs, dairy, honey are definitely not healthful. Are definitely not uh, ethical. Now, let's get on to the environmental side of things. Now, I can definitely say that backyard animal farming is definitely more environmentally friendly than you know, the mass factory farming. I can definitely agree with that. But it's by no means the most environmentally friendly practice out of all farming practices. If we look at, or if we uh, watch the film Cowspiracy, we will actually see the environmental impact of animal agriculture. Even backyard animal farming is definitely not sustainable. Now, they don't go into the environmental side of, of backyard eggs and backyard honey, but actually a vegan uses less land, less water, and less, of course, less food because you have to feed these animals something. So it's, again, devastating on the environment, devastating on world hunger, and devastating on so many other factors, which I mentioned, uh, health and ethical. Environmental disaster. If we want to create a natural system, veganic gardening is the only way that, and the best way to bring, a, bring, bring about the most yield most crop yield veganic it's organic vegan gardening or organic vegan farming basically veganic there's a lot of different names for it but veganic is the most popular name it's also sometimes called um there's other 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 names for that uh, but veganic growing is basically a system where you absolutely don't implement any animals in that system there, it could be 
consider All Souls Wild grown because basically you mimic the way uh, nature uh, works and nature runs. So you have a system where there's absolutely no animals, there's no cows, there's no sheep, there's no uh, you know hens, there's no bees, there's no any animal except for all the naturally free roaming animals that may come from the forests and the jungles and so forth. But never do we implement any animals or animal inputs like manure, blood meal, feather meal, bone meal, all those things. Absolutely no. And it actually yields more, more, more food, more food. So you can actually feed more people with less land than if you are if you have a system with animals. I've tried it. I've seen the results. I've seen the statistics. I've seen the videos like Cowspiracy. I've seen all of that. And I can tell you for being vegan for since 2009, many years, almost a decade now, I can tell you that vegan and veganic are the way to go. Now people can argue and, and say, oh, la, 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 you know, like they can they can justify whatever they want because they're justifying it because they've seen people do it and people say it works and that and that and that and that, but they haven't tried it themselves. They don't know how it is. They don't know the work that goes into into animal farming and they don't know the repercussions and negative repercussions the ethical, the health, and the environmental impact, which I just mentioned. And so I implore you to check out vegan living. Eat as much vegan damn foods as you want. Beans, grains, nuts, seeds, fruits, vegetables, you name it. Everything is there for you. Everything is there for you and veganic is the way to go. Use vegan urine and vegan manure. So vegan humanure from vegans. Mix it into the compost. You've got the best, absolutely best recipe for naturally, uh, natural fertilizer and organic matter. Your scraps from fruits and vegetables and your humanure and your urine put that on the plants they love that i tell you some uh, one thing that i that i um that i learned and actually there was a tree a neem tree that i had it was growing and the next day it was all dead almost almost all dead almost all dead okay so i literally put some urine on it okay and I put urine every every so often and after a few weeks that tree became alive literally became alive from being almost dead to just coming alive coming alive like you wouldn't imagine coming alive it came alive it was like growing like crazy because it works I've tried it it works the veganic system is one of the best systems out there and it actually produces according to people who who are gardening veganically it produces the most yield the most yield so that is why we shouldn't be uh, implementing animals into our backyard uh, farming situations in fact it's not farming it's harming so stop that nonsense and get to a veganic system because veganic is the best be vegan, like this video, share it, and don't forget to subscribe because I love you. And don't forget to click that little bell beside the subscribe because you want the uh, videos to come to your inbox. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Don't forget the planet is round because, because that's what science says. That's what science says.